Hello everybody, welcome to another video. So in this video today, we're going to go over an example of an XS script. So uh, let's get straight into it. So if you notice on this map, there will be a couple of monuments. There's one over here, one over here, another one over here, and another one over here. And the goal of this exercise I want to make these monuments similar to how sacred sites work in AoE4, if you pay attention to that. Basically, if one player is controlling all of the monuments, then a 10-minute countdown will begin, and if that player um, controls the monuments for the entire time, then they will win the game. And we will attempt to do that with an XS script. So, for the map in question, we have this map over here, and we have included the XS, which is monumentvictory.xs. Now, currently, that is blank. So now we need to figure out what to add in this script to achieve what we want. This is going to entail some programming concepts and fundamentals that may be a little difficult to grasp if you haven't had at least a little bit of programming experience before, but I will do my best to explain everything as I'm going, uh, and hopefully it won't be super confusing. So if we're thinking that we want some sort of code that runs itself over and over again to check whether one player has captured all of the monuments, um, if you watched the previous video, which I would recommend, uh, we should know that we would need a rule. So a rule is something that checks itself over and over again. Um, and we will call this rule monument victory. So this rule by default is going to be active. Uh, it will have a min interval of one and a max interval of one also. So, uh, now that we know we have a rule, we need to figure out what to put in this rule. So, our goal here is to figure out uh, how many monuments are owned by a particular player and compare that to however many monuments are in the game. So, luckily for us, whenever a player owns a monument, this resource storage of 14 will be incremented by 1 for the player which controls it. So if we were to look up the value of this resource for a particular player, we can know how many monuments they control. So in order to obtain a specific value for a resource, we can use the xs function, which is xs player attribute. So first argument is the player number. So if I say I want to return player one's attribute for resource number 14, that happens to be C attribute ruins, and I will say that. And I just to check, I will say xs chat data. Uh, we will say we will chat p1 monuments is uh, this value over here. So we will end with a semicolon, and we'll restart. So uh, we can see very clearly that it's chatting that player one is owning one monument over here. And now let's do something. Let's see what happens if we try to capture another monument. See now, uh, it's showing that we have two monuments because we're constantly chatting the number of monuments owned by player one, which is me. So that is one helpful thing. So now that we know how to check the number of monuments owned by the player, we need to figure out how many monuments are in the game. So basically, if I were to go through every single player and add up the value of their resource 14, basically the sum of all the players' monuments, 
plus the Gaia monuments are going to be the total monuments that are in the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a variable. The variable is going to be of type integer, and it's going to say total monuments. And that's going to be set equal to zero for now, and we're going to modify it within this rule. So we'll comment this out for now. So my goal here is to loop through all the players to check how many monuments they own. So for that, I'm going to use a for loop. So I'm going to say for player ID equals one semicolon uh, less than or equal to total players. Now, total players is something that we're going to have to define because we're going to need to know how many players there are in the game uh, to know how many players to loop through. So uh, something to know about XS is that you, is that it's possible to define and declare variables outside of a rule or a function. So if I wanted to say, want to declare the variable called total players outside of this rule, I can do that. I'll set that equal to zero. But what I cannot do is I cannot call XS functions outside of a rule or a function. So right now this is set to zero, but if I wanted to set it to the value of XS get num players, this would not work because we cannot call an XS function outside of this rule. But, um, but if we call this function inside the rule, we can still declare the variable outside of the rule. Um, so we'll comment out this for now, but we'll, instead of chatting player one's monuments, we'll just chat the value of total players. just to check to make sure that we are correctly interpreting the number of players in the game. Must have forgotten the semicolon somewhere. And yes, I did. Over there. Okay, so it is properly now interpreting the correct number of players is four. So now back in our access script, we can continue with this for loop. So we're going to start at one and we're going to go all the way to four. And within this loop, we're going to take the current value of this variable, which is total monuments. And we're going to say it equals total monuments plus XS player attribute of the player ID resource 14 value, which is C attribute ruins over here. Okay, so let's just uh, take a look and see what we've got here. So first of all, the total monuments in the game will be zero. And then the first time we go through this loop, it'll take zero plus the value of player one's monuments. Loop through this again and add the value of player two's monuments, and then respectively for player three and player four. So I will attempt to chat the total monuments in the game. Always remember those semicolons. So it is correctly interpreting the total monuments in the game to be four because each player currently owns one. And since there are four players in the game, it knows that there are four monuments. Now at this point, I would like to point out one thing is that we had to declare the variable called total players uh, up at the top here uh, in order to reference it later on. But this variable over here called player ID is not something that we explicitly declared. And basically, um, 
Excess is smart enough that when you use player ID in this context, it implicitly defines it as an integer and it will properly interpret it whenever you use it inside the context of this loop. So that's one thing to know about for loops is that uh, this variable doesn't need to be declared explicitly. But um, at this point, I would like to try one other thing. So we can notice that at the start of the game, all of the monuments are with starting within the control of the player. Let's try something else. If we were to say set Gaia object only on all of these monuments, and then we'll come out to comment out this. See, at the beginning of the game, it's thinking that our total monuments is zero, which technically based on our code is correct because what we're doing at this point is taking the total monuments owned by players. And right now, none of the monuments are owned by players. So what we have to do to correct this is we have to include Gaia in this as well. And Gaia is just player index zero. So instead of going from player one to player four, we're going from player zero to player four, which would include Gaia. So now we are back to properly interpreting four monuments, uh, even though they are all Gaia. Okay, so at this point, now we have correctly interpreted how many total monuments are on the map. So uh, the next thing to do is that every one second, which is the interval of our rule, we're going to check and see if a particular player has control of all of the monuments. So I will take this for loop and I will just copy it down here. And in this case, we're going to start checking from player one to player four because we don't want to trigger a victory condition for Gaia. Uh, so you're going to say if the total monuments owned by this particular player xs player attribute player id attribute ruins is equal to the total number of monuments in the game which at this point we already know, then we're going to do something. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disable the current rule we are in because we are no longer going to check uh, whether one player has owned all of the monuments because we already satisfied that condition. So we'll say xs disable self. The second thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, set the value of some countdown variable. So I will declare another variable up here saying integer count down time. And then once one player has owned all the monuments, I will set the value of this variable to 600 for 10 minutes. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable another rule, which is going to represent the countdown. So I'm going to say xs enable rule. And we have not defined this rule yet. So we'll do that really quick. We'll say rule is called countdown. This rule will be inactive at the start of the game. And we're going to activate it over here. So you're going to say activate rule, which is called count down. Don't forget the semicolon. And then in this rule, we're going to have some different set of criteria. So we have to make sure that throughout this entire countdown that the same player maintains control of all the monuments. So we need to know first which player that is. So I will declare another variable up here, 
integer. Victory player equals zero. So once we know which of the players has satisfied the condition of owning all of the monuments, we can set victory player equal to player ID. And then over here, when we initiate the countdown, we can have this condition of if. Well, we're going to have a very similar condition to what we have up here. So we're going to check however many monuments are owned by the victory player, the one who initiated this countdown. And we're going to compare it to the total monuments in the game. So if the player which initiated this countdown continues to own all the monuments in the game, then what we can do is we can keep counting down our 10 minute timer. So our countdown time is going to be countdown time minus minus, which basically just decrements the value of this by one. And then we will chat that time also. So we'll bring this chat statement down here. We'll say chat the data. Um, Time for player plus victory player plus uh, space plus the countdown time. So if the player continues to own all of the monuments, then we will subtract one from this time, and then we will chat that time uh, in the game. So let's see what happens. So when we test this, we can see that we get this error, and I'll try to explain what's going on here. So uh, basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to reference this variable, which is total monuments, um, but that variable is locally defined to this rule over here. We are only declaring it in this rule here. So we cannot reference this variable total monuments outside of this rule since we declared it in here. So what we can do is we can declare it outside of uh, this rule here. So now this will be recognizable in this other rule called countdown. Now that may look uh, pretty simple enough, but let me try and check something over here. So we will chat the total monuments again. It's not. So the first time we run through that rule, we correctly interpret the total monuments to be four, but then we keep on executing that rule and it keeps going up by four every single time. So previously when we were declaring this variable within this rule, we were basically setting the value to zero before going through this loop. And now we are only setting it to zero once up here. So now every single time we execute this rule, it is now four more than the previous time we checked. Now, we could uh, tackle this in a diff different ways. We could, before executing this loop, set the value of total monuments to zero, or uh, we could try a different method, which I tend to do, which is set up a separate variable called init, uh, an integer called init, set that equal to zero. And then prior to finding out the total monuments, we will check if init is equal to zero, then we can figure out the total monuments in the game. And then as soon as we do this, we will say init is equal to one. So the first time this rule is executed, it will loop through all the players and find out the total monuments in the game. 
But then the second time, and every other time after that, it will not do that because init is no longer zero. So it keeps on properly interpreting the monuments as four, which is good. And now uh, we get a, a bit of unnecessary code removed since we no longer have to go through this loop every one second. So it saves a bit of time, but it's not really super significant. But we can get rid of this and we can check to see if our countdown rule is properly working. So we'll send you over here, over there, over there, and over here. So that's two monuments. A third one. And a fourth one. And now we can see that our time is now counting down from 600 all the way down. So that's going to be 10 minutes, so I'm not going to wait around that long. I'm going to reduce it to 30 just for testing purposes. And then we need to figure out what happens when the countdown reaches zero. So um, if our countdown time is equal to zero, then whichever player has controlled the monuments for all that time it has now won the game. So there's no direct XS function to declare victory for a certain player. But um, what we can do is we can loop through all the players and who and whichever player we find which is not the victory player, we can just set the HP of all of their stuff to zero so it all dies right away. So we will go through a similar loop to this saying for player ID is from one to four, which is the total players. And we will put this conditional if the player that we're looping through is not equal to the victory player. Basically this exclamation plus equal string is not equal to so if the player in question is not the victory player, then we can set the HP of all their stuff to zero. So in order to set the HP of all their stuff to zero, what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare implicitly another variable, which is unit class equals one. So basically all of the unit classes are over here and they loop through from 900 to 961. So if I just target those specific classes and set their HP to zero, uh, then all that stuff will just die. So if it equals 900 to 961, then we will say XS effect amount we will say C set attribute of the unit class in question. We'll set the attribute C hit points. We will set the value to zero. And for the player number, it will be player ID. So if the time equals zero, set the HP of everybody else's units to zero. So now our countdown is only 30 seconds, so it shouldn't take too long to see what happens when we get down to zero.
So that seems like it's working. Once the countdown goes down, we win the game because everyone else's stuff just straight up died. So that piece of the rule is now complete. Uh, but now we have to figure out what happens if the player loses control of a monument before the time runs out. So if the player continues to own all of the monuments, then we can continue this countdown. But we will provide this else case to say what happens if the control of the monuments is lost. So basically what's going to happen is quite simple. We're going to just, uh, right away we're going to chat data monument control lost for player plus victory player and then we are going to disable the countdown rule so we'll say excess disable self and then what we're going to do is we're just going to enable this uh, checking rule over here called monument victory so if the control of the monuments happens to be lost then we just go right back up to where we started where we keep checking again to see exactly when a certain player owns all of the monuments so this yellow unit come on so as soon as that yellow unit gained control of this monument it said monument control now is lost for player one now let's see if i can go grab that back So as soon as I grab it back, it starts the countdown again, right back from 600. So this looks to be working as intended. So that's pretty nice. Now, one thing I would like to point out is that there is a fair uh, limitation with this method. So normally it would be intuitive that if players happen to be on a certain team, that control of the monuments can be shared uh, within the team to still trigger that countdown, but uh, as far as I know there is no excess function to return the team number of a particular player, so this uh, rule or this excess script has the limitation that all the monuments in the game have to be owned by the same player. It's not sufficient that uh, the monuments are shared within the team. But besides that, I think this is a pretty good example of uh, some of the applications for excess in a random map. Hopefully it wasn't too difficult to follow, and hopefully you guys have learned something here. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.